Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We're going to take a look at our second video from topic 9.8. We're dealing with pretty tricky areas of polar curves and I think this one's going to be maybe the most challenging one that we've seen thus far. It's going to deal with an inner looped limosome. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. The question reads, find the area of the region lying between the inner and outer loops of the limosome, r equal 1 plus 2 sine theta. Use your TI Inspire to sketch a graph of the curve to confirm the boundaries of integration that are shown in the figure below. And I asked in this particular case to not use your TI Inspire to evaluate. Now, I tell you what I'm going to do with this question. I'm going to modify it a little bit. And depending upon if you're a student at Avon, which version of these notes you have, let's say that this is the situation. I'm going to pretend for just a moment that these are not given to you. So we'll pretend that those angle measures weren't provided. However, a graph will be provided and we will allow you to use the TI Inspire or whatever graphing calculator that you have to evaluate the definite integral. So basically, I'm saying that the focus is going to be more on the setup. And that's what I think is so important about these problems because those boundaries can be tricky. So let's make sure that we understand what the problem is asking. Finding the area of the region lying between the inner and the outer loops is really that shaded area. It's that kind of uh, magenta type pink colored area that we have. And there really isn't going to be a way, unfortunately, just to find that particular areas, uh, that region's area with one integral. We can't help but including that inner loop as we try to find the area of this entire outward thing. So what we're going to have to do, the philosophy that we're going to have to adopt here, is if we want to find the area of that shaded region, I'll just call it A subshaded, we have no choice but take the area of the outer region, or maybe I should say the area of the overall, how about that? Overall means both the inside plus the outside. And then we subtract the area of that inner loop. Now it'll hopefully become a little bit more clear to you why this is going to work as we start developing these definite integrals. So what I want to do first is find the area of the inner loop. Now to do that, we have to know a little bit about where we are going to be at a certain time location here on this polar curve. For instance, how does this polar curve start to graph? Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to, to throw together a, a t-chart, even though you have the graph here, some students can see a little bit more intuitively where they are, but that's not a big problem if you have to set up some values here. So if you say at theta equals zero, which is a very easy time to work with, a very easy theta to work with, you get one minus two times the sine of zero, which of course is one minus zero or one. So that would suggest that we are going to be right there at that point at theta equals zero. Now the problem with that is that's not very helpful in terms of getting us into that inner loop. So you have to think a little bit more uh, in depth about well, what is it going to take for me to get right here? Because that's where I really want to be. What is that theta value? So one of the easiest ways to do that is just to understand if you are sitting right there on the pole, and that's where we are, right? The origin of the polar coordinate plane, then your radius is a value of zero. So it's almost as if we're saying, oh, let's let the radius be zero, and let's figure out 
what the theta measure is. It's sort of, sort of backwards. And so in order to make that happen, you're just going to have to set your polar equation equal to zero. Set the r equal to zero. And then you can see that we can solve this fairly easily. We can subtract one over, divide by a two, so sine of theta would be a half. And then you have to know your trig pretty good here, and sine of theta is a half is pi over, not pi over two, but pi over six, that's better. And uh, there's going to be another time, and that would occur, let's see, all students take calculus, so sine would be positive on, I'll check them here with a highlighter, these two quadrants, so quadrants one and two, right? And so that would be pi over six and five pi over six. So that's what's happening. When we find ourselves at this point, entering that loop, right? When this is sketched, it actually moves, the, the point would actually move like this. From this point, it goes through the inner loop, and then it's out of the inner loop, and then it goes back around. So that is going to occur at our calculations that we just arrived at, which would be theta equal pi over 6. And in fact, I can go ahead and just erase these because that's what was there originally. I just wanted you to see how you could come up with those values in the event that they weren't provided for you. And it's very likely that could be the case. So I think finding the area of the inner loop isn't going to be all that difficult because we're looking at taking 1 half times the integration from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of the quantity 1 minus 2 sine of theta squared with respect to theta. Now in a moment we will enter this expression into the graphing calculator and come up with its result. If you were to integrate this by hand it's not a terribly difficult difficult integral to handle students at Avon High School. We've we've studied these many times. It's just a matter of having to expand out this expression. It's going to produce a sine squared of theta and and then if you recall there's a trig identity for sine squared that looks something like this. It's like an adaptation of the double angle formula, if you recall. And so you'd have to insert that for sine squared and then uh, integrate that piece. But like I said, I don't want the focus to be on evaluating the definite integral. So much <laughs> focus here needs to be on knowing what the boundaries are and how to structure our overall approach. And that's what's going to be really more important on the AP exam anyway. All right, so now we've got our inner loop. The next thing that we need to do is find the area overall. Now, when I say overall, what that means is, and I'm going to mess up my picture here temporarily, but overall is the area of both the outer part and the inner loop at the same time. Because it seems logical then, if we were to just simply um, employ, let's say, a approach like area overall minus area of the inner loop, if we end up subtracting this inner loop, right, and I don't think my eraser is going to let me subtract that very good, but you get the idea. I can use a different highlighter here. I subtract off this, this middle part, and then I end up saying that once this is removed, what's left was that original shaded region. And I'm going to return back to that picture here. So how do we go about finding the area of the overall? Well, a very similar approach. We just have to think about where to start and where to end with this thing. So I could set up my integral here with the 1 half and the integrand that I know I'm going to have, but that's the easy part, right? The boundaries are always going to be the challenge here. So we have some options with this, and I don't want you to feel like you're pigeonholed into the approach that I'm going to take, 
But I really like the fact that we've established this point. I think that's a really important idea. And the point that I want to really focus on is this 5 pi over 6. Because at 5 pi over 6, we have realized that we have come out from the inner loop, and we are just about ready to head this way around the outer part of this shape. And that's why I really wanted to call this overall or maybe the outer part so that it was kind of clear to us. All I need to do is get all the way around this so that I can close it up right back here. Now that's going to cause for a very interesting situation to occur. Let's go ahead and say that 5 pi over 6 is going to be that lower boundary, because that's what I want to use. That's going to be correct. But in order for us to get all the way around back to where we started at that 5 pi over 6, we actually have to go past this little moment where we started to graph in the first place. Remember from our table when theta was 0? Well, by the time we've gone all the way around to that point, not only is theta 0, but it's 2 pi as well. In fact, if you plug 2 pi in for theta, 1 minus 2 sine of 2 pi, you're going to get 1 as well. But notice that we have to go just a little bit further to get back to the top of where that inner loop begins. And so if that pi over 6 was going to be used originally to get into the inner loop, by the time we've gone a complete revolution around, we're going to be adding 2 pi to that pi over 6, and that is going to be 13 pi over 6, which is what we have for an upper bound. By the time we compute this purple definite integral and subtract this blue one, we should get our actual answer. And we're going to take a look at that on the graphing calculator. Let's do that. Okay, here we are at our graphing calculator. Again, I'm using the TI Inspire. You can use any model of graphing calculator to evaluate these definite intervals. And I tell you what, to get a better view here, I'm going to change this to a computer view so that we can see things just a little bit nicer. And I'll move my camera out of the way. And so just to double check, I seem to have entered both the area for the outer loop and the areas for the inner loop um, correctly. And when I say outer loop, I mean the overall. And uh, if you recall, we want to subtract these um, in the way that is reverse of how I entered them. Remember, the top here is the inner loop. The bottom is the overall. So I'll just go up and um, let's say we highlight the answer that we got here. So I can just copy and paste, and then I'll subtract the answer that we got up there. And I get a result of, I'll move my camera out of the way one more time, and I have pi plus 3 square root of 3. And that indeed is going to be our overall area. Now let's go ahead and take a look back at the original problem and discuss some alternative approaches that you could have taken to solving it. So we're going to write up our final answer here. Area of the shaded region is area of the overall minus the area of the inner loop, which I've already worked that out to be pi plus 3 root 3. Again, a student could probably just as easily evaluate the purple integral as the blue one because they're the same integrand, both requiring the use of this identity. It's just that there are different boundaries. So other approaches to this. A lot of times there are students that tend to focus on dealing with half of the shape rather than the whole shape. So. If I were to get rid of some of my markings on this, what I'm saying is that a student could attempt to find the area of the inner loop by just focusing on this much of the shape. In other words, the left half. Well, if that were the approach, and it certainly works, 
we would have to understand that pi over 2 would have been the upper boundary that you would have used in this case that I'm circling. However, the 1 half would have to be multiplied by a 2. So in other words, I, I can provide this alternative approach here. I'm not going to punch it into the calculator to, to verify. Certainly something that you can do if you would like. But this would certainly be a reasonable approach. And instead of writing the entire expression out, I'm just going to say r squared. Likewise, with the overall area, this outside area, one could say, let's start with this 5 pi over 6, like we do always, but we only want to go around halfway, which would be down to here, so that you would be finding this entire area. Notice that you're including the half part of that inner loop, which is exactly why we have to subtract it out. But we have to know that this bottom portion is 3 pi over 2. Now, if you're wondering how would you come up with the pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, that would just require a little bit more investigation into your table. But I know that you could come up with that with a little bit of thought. And so you could have this as a potential way to compute that overall outer regions area. Okay, It's just something to keep in mind because uh, you just have to pick what you feel most comfortable with and, and what approach seems really the most obvious to you. So anyhow, I hope this helps a little bit. We, we've got a few more videos in store for you that will close out 9.8 uh, and 9.9. And I guarantee if you just spend a little bit of time, practice, the more of these that you can set up, the more confident you're going to get, you'll get pretty good at finding these boundaries of integration. Anyway, I hope this helps and we'll see you next time.